These are my tools for making great PS2 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. We got a really great PS2 tutorial today. It's going to be a little bit of a long one, so in the video description, I'll try to put timestamps on key features as this video progresses. But in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing today is I have a Raspberry Pi 3B+, and I wanted to put to good use. So in a previous video a long time ago, I had a Raspberry Pi, an older model, and I was playing PS2 games through a USB connected to the Pi, through Ethernet to the OPL using Open Media Vault. The problem was it worked, but it was a little bit of a cumbersome process, a little bit technical, and it was just, just not very clean or easy. So there's a program, uh, OS, if you want to call it that, that I've known for a long time now, and it works great, and it's called PSX Pi SMB Shear. There's a link in the video description to where you can go to the GitHub. It has a really nice description of what this is in a nutshell. Basically allows you to use a Raspberry Pi 1, 2, or 3 model, uh, like a 3B+, Plus, for example, that, which I have. And you can use it with your PS2. You can play games, PS2 games through the network. You can play your PS1 games through a pop starter. If you wish, you can use it as an X-Link Kai kind of thing to play. Like for me, I like to play Halo 2 on the Xbox 360. So it's a very awesome solution. Or maybe you want to play like SOCOM 2, for example, on the PS2. There's a lot of great stuff you can do with this. Uh, let's just call it an OS for now. So how does it work? How do you get set up? Real simple. So first thing we're going to do is you, I'll have a link to this GitHub. You can read all the good stuff here. But basically the prereq is a Raspberry Pi 1, 2, or 3 and a micro SD card. Today's tutorial, I'm using a 4 gigabyte. I just have laying around. If you have a larger one, that's great too. And we'll go over some more details on how to set up the Raspberry Pi so it can connect to your home network to make it a little bit easier if you want to send SSH commands to shut down remotely, for example, or navigate your, your share and all that good stuff. So what I have right now is I have a micro SD inserted in my computer and I'm going to format this guy. So the easiest way to format it is I like to use a program called SD card formatter and this will automatically select the correct, but just double check it. I have a J drive, which is actually my micro SD. So I'm just going to format this guy. Okay, so in a second, it will be formatted. Okay, awesome. Everything is good. So now what we're going to do next is make sure you download the latest release. So if you go to the top of this GitHub, go to releases, and there's a link here. You can download this link. It's 771 megabytes, so download that sucker. Here I have on my desktop. Using 7-zip, I right-click and I extract it to its own folder. Inside that folder, it is another tar file. Extract that, and you get an image file. So now what you want to do basically is write this image file or read this image file, actually is write this image file to, uh, to the micro SD. I like to use Win32 Disk Imager. There's other programs out there like, like uh, etcher.io, which you can use. So use your favorite program. If you want to follow along, you can use Win32 Disk Imager. I'll have all the links in the video description as well. So what you do is you click on this folder icon, go to your desktop, for example, navigate to wherever your image file is, and it automatically selected and detected my micro SD uh, card through my USB reader. And I'm gonna say write. And now it's writing the image, depending on the speed of your card and how big it is, your time will vary in terms of that completion process. So while I have this running in the background, let me just do a real quick overview of uh, how to put games on your PS2 thumb drive or a flash drive, if that's something you wanna do. If you read this excellent write-up on the GitHub site. Um, if you don't want to use USB, you can definitely put your games on the micro SD and there's some instructions of where do you put your, your games. Basically, you can navigate it on the SMB share once your Raspberry Pi is on the network and you can dump it like in the DVD folder or dump it in the root of that share folder. Or if you're more tech savvy, you can put your games, let's say on USB or connect um, through ethernet to your Raspberry Pi and transfer the files that way through command line, but that's outside the scope of today's video. So let's do the real basics, easy stuff, just to get your feet wet. And then for users that are more advanced, you can uh, play around um, doing other file copy methods, basically. So I'm gonna plug in my USB thumb drive. This thumb drive already has my two example PS2 games on there. So let me showcase what I did as a real quick primer. If you need more direction on how this works, I do have a PS2 playlist that goes in more detail on what is required and how all this stuff works. 
So here's my USB drive, letter K, and using one program called USB Util 2.0, I was able to convert an ISO, and it basically split it into these files here on the root of my USB thumb drive. So that's one, one way of adding games to your USB thumb drive. The other method is if you have a DVD game that's about four gigabytes or less, you can put that ISO game into this folder and you're good to go. If you wanna get more technical, you wanna add more art, you can use a program called OPL Manager V21, I believe, which will properly rename your game so it can download the art properly and put it into the art folder, for example. But in today's video tutorial, I'm just going very bare, very minimum, very, you know, just, just not a lot of stuff today. But if you want to trick it out, I have tons of other videos that go way more detail on how to, how to set that up. If you happen to have a CD game, you can put that ISO into the CD folder, 700, 800 megabytes or less, basically. And that's how that works. So this USB thumb drive is good to go. So when I showcase this later, when I plug into my Raspberry Pi, it will be recognized through the SMB share over the network to the PS2. And that's pretty awesome. So let me just go ahead and I'm going to eject that thumb drive real quick here. Okay, so where are we at in this writing process? 31%. So let me just go over a recap real quick here. So in a previous video tutorial a long time ago, I used Open Media Vault. Yes, it worked. It's uh, more of a NAS OS, but it's a little bit cumbersome. This, if you want to call this an OS, I'm not really sure what to call this exactly, but the P PSX Pi SMB Share, great solution. Um, I've tested this on a Pi 3B Plus, of course. I do have a Pi... 3A+, plus, which I've tested. It's a little bit more work because you have a little bit more dongles and stuff, but it does work. I do have a Pi Zero W. I've not tested it yet. I think it would work. I would plan on trying it. And if you guys are interested in other Pi solutions, I can definitely do follow-up tutorials on this as well. And I might, I might do it. It's pretty cool. A lot of fun stuff. So if you have some time, you can definitely go to this GitHub, read all this stuff here. It's a lot of good information. Um, once we have totally written the image to the micro SD card, we'll talk about how to configure your wireless network properly, um, the way I do it at least. And then I'll show you just an example of what it looks like when you boot it up for the first time. Uh, there's a program that I like to use called Putty. I have a link in the video description. This is a program I like to use to connect to the Raspberry Pi over the network so you can issue uh, command lines to it. Like for example, the shutdown command. And I'll showcase what you know how to how to do that later in this video tutorial. If you want to get more fancy, yes, you can look online to do like a shutdown script. You know, if you have like a simple push button connected to the GPIO pins, I don't have that. So for now, I'm just going to do the old school uh, SSH method, and uh, we'll see how that. I'll show you how that works later. The default username and password is Pi, and password is Raspberry, and that's how that works. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video momentarily and once this is done, I'll show you how to set up the rest of the, the networking stuff. So hold on tight, let's do this. Okay, the right process is successful. So click okay, exit. And if I go to my micro SD, this is what it looks like. Um, here we go. So first thing I'm gonna do is, just in case I like to always do this for all my Raspberry Pi images, is I'm just gonna make a, a default file called SSH, no extension, and that's it. So that's good to go. So that enables SSH if it's not already part of this OS thing already. Next thing is we need to create the wireless file. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna copy this, WPA underscore supplicant.conf. Go back to here, right click, make a new file, let's say text file, paste it, and we're good to go. And you can right click, edit with Notepad++ or Notepad. Let's do Notepad++ today. And let's go back to the website and we're gonna copy this stuff and paste it here. So I will blur this on my end, but what you wanna do is type in your SSID. So let's say your SSID is my home network, for example. And let's say your password is, let's just keep this real simple today. Password one, two, three, or one, two, three, exclamation mark. So let's say that's your credentials. You go file and you go save. Um, but let me fix this to what my real network is real quick. So let me just blur this out real quick here. So, and let me put in my password and file, save. 
Okay, so I'm gonna exit everything. So that's good. And we got everything we got it. So we got the image written. We got the SSH. We got the wireless file. That's good. So I'm gonna eject this. So let's eject it. And I'm gonna plug into my Raspberry Pi, which is right here next to my computer. I do have it um, connected to my HDMI capture device. So we'll see what that looks like on the first boot in a second here. So let me just open it up um, like here. That's good so far. And then let's go ahead and connect the power. I'm using a battery pack at the moment. And we'll get this. Okay, so I got it plugged in. And here we go. So the first boot will always be the longest. Uh, let's see if I can expand this. So first boot will always be the longest, of course, because that needs to basically boot this OS. And it needs to you know, expand the file system and all that kind of stuff and also connect to the network. In the future, um, when you connect to your PS2 after the first boot, it will be much quicker process, basically. Of course, if you have a class 10 micro SD, that will help with the boot times. If you have a slower class, like a class uh, six or four or something like that, then your boot times will be a little bit slower, of course. So here it is, it's going through the process and it tells me what my IP address is, 10 -0040. That'll be important because I'll showcase how to use the PuTTY program if you want to log in and in my case, um, like do the issue the shutdown command. So I'll show you how to shut down your Raspberry Pi through PuTTY. And then what I'm gonna do for real is I'm gonna power back up, connect to my PS2, and we'll showcase the rest of the video tutorial with my uh, TV and the PS2. Should be a lot of good times here. So it's still working, it's not totally done yet. Now it is a little bit slow because my SD card is, uh, is a class four today, not a class 10. It's just some spare micro SD I had laying around. And uh, it's also loading all these other services in the background, you know, like Xlink Kai and all that kind of stuff. So um, if you're not interested in that, well, too bad. You're going to get it anyways. Okay, finally. So that took a while. So I sort of cut ahead to help save some time here. But that took a, a, a minute or two, basically. But when you boot it up, you know, subsequent uses, it'll be much quicker. So anyways, this is what it looks like. I'm not going to use a keyboard to log in. I'm actually going to use the PuTTY program. So let's go ahead, bring up the PuTTY real quick, show you how that works in a nutshell. So this is what the PuTTY program looks like. It's freeware. If you want to use a similar program, by all means, go ahead. But this program is pretty cool too. So host name is the IP address of my Pi. And this is SSH, say open. And then over here, everything is good. Then, and if your, if your Pi is connected to your network, it, you'll see this. So the default is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Okay, cool. And that's it. So um, if you want to shut it down, then what I like to do is do a sudo shutdown dash H now. So when you do that, then on your screen here, it's going to look something like this basically if you had it connected to a monitor. Otherwise, what you can do is if you're going headless, like which what I like to do most of the time with my Pi and my PS2 is just take a look at that there's like a second LED that blinks green basically. So you just wait for that to blink green and after a while, it'll just stop blinking green and I think it's, it's, it's no longer illuminated. And then that's how you know you can turn it off. Or you can just wait a good minute or two and uh, disconnect the power that way. So here, I'm looking at my Pi and there's only a red light on. There's no LED that's green and we're good to go. So what we're gonna do next is I am going to disconnect my Pi I'm going to connect it to my PS2 with the Ethernet cord, power up the Pi. It's going to go through the boot sequence. I'm not going to connect the monitor to it. I'm just going to go headless, actually. And uh, that's pretty much it. We got the USB thumb drive on standby to showcase how to play the PS2 games. And that's pretty much it. So with that said, let's jump straight into the next portion of this video tutorial. Let's do this. All right, so let's do this. So here's my setup real quick. I got my TV. I got my PS2 Slim that's running free McBoot. I have my battery pack that's powering my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus that's running the operating system right now. And if you don't have a battery pack, you can certainly connect to a wall wart, like 2.1 amps or higher for the USB charger output, and you should be good to go. I have no games here, because we're going to be showcasing the games off of this USB thumb drive today. And here's just a regular Ethernet cable, Cat5, Cat6, no crossover, not required. Um, 
One thing that I did learn that if you had the USB thumb drive already plugged in and then turn on your Pi and then go to OPL, you get into a situation where it may not show your games at all. So the trick is boot your Raspberry Pi first, log into OPL, plug in your USB thumb drive, and then your game should show automatically when you do the reconnect process, which we'll showcase in a second here. So let's turn on the PS2. My Raspberry Pi is already on to uh, help save some time. It already booted, basically. And let's go ahead and go to OPL and go over network settings. Okay, let's do this. So here I have it set to automatic, automatically load Ethernet, and of course we won't see anything. So if I plug in my USB thumb drive right now real quick here. So let me do that on the back, just any of the four ports. And we should be good to go. Now, I don't know if it's going to automatically refresh. You could definitely press select. Here, I don't see it doing anything. That's okay. We'll fix that in a second. So first thing is settings. This is my setup. If you want to mimic my setup, basically I have Ethernet set to auto. Default menu is Ethernet games. We're good to go. And under network configuration, here's my setup. So real quick, this is off, auto, static, 192.168.2.2, 255, 255, 255, 0 for the subnet mask. Gateway 192.168.2.1, DNS, all eights. SMB server, that's your Raspberry Pi, so here's your IP. 192.168.2.1, the share is the, um, the word share, all lowercase, no username, no password. So here you say reconnect, and also make sure you save your changes. And then here we go, here's my games, I have two games on the USB. Let's run Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and the game will load from USB through the Raspberry Pi, through the Ethernet, to the PS2, no lag for videos, no lag for the gameplay, no lag for the sound or the music. It's just a really awesome way of playing your PS2 games if you want to use a Raspberry Pi 3B plus kind of method. So if we go through and do some gameplay, gameplay real quick here, we'll see how awesome this is. If, you, if you're curious on how do I shut down the Raspberry Pi um, properly, there's a lot of different ways. If you're, if you're tech savvy, you can get like a button and figure out a shutdown script. I'm not there yet, so what I like to do is I log into my computer, run the PuTTY program, SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Um, default password is, I believe it's the username is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. And then after you log in, you can type in the shutdown command. I'll have it in the video description, but it's going to be sudo space shutdown space dash, dash h space now. Give it a, you know, 30 seconds or so. Wait until the green LED is not flashing or illuminated, and then you can safely disconnect the power to your Raspberry Pi and prevent any micro SD card data corruption. So that's today's video game tutorial with the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with the PS2. If you have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.